All right, here it is guys, my finished product of my very first Frame Arms Kit Bash final completed build here. This was a lot of fun. So here I'm, and this, the base kit that this was based off of was actually the Cutlass, but I changed the head to the base lard parts and I changed the feet to the base lard parts. So it's kind of really more of a base lard really at this point. Customized and I'm calling it the base lard Cosette. Basically, only for the sole reason was that I was recently listening to some songs from Le, Le Miserable and I thought, hmm, Cosette, that would be a kind of a cool name for a giant robot. So, here we are. Uh, that's the name that I went with for this. And yeah, if you guys didn't see the work in progress videos, I went over the, like, the building process and this little bit of customization that I did with this, basically kind of adding some details here and there, a little bit of customization. and. Uh, then went over the painting process, how I chose the paints and everything, all in the three different work in progress videos. So if you missed those, you can go back and check those out. But this was a really fun kit to work on, I gotta say. And definitely looks so much better once it's all painted and done up. Everything. I mean, and I actually really liked it in its raw form when it was just kit bashed and unpainted. I thought the colors actually surprisingly went together really quite well. But of course painted, it's gonna look awesome as well here. And just once again, a reminder that I did use all, oh, pretty much all Nazca paints for this. All the main colors are all done with the Gaia Notes Nazca paints. That's the Naoki's signature line of paints. Now, uh, some of the details and then a couple bits are not Nazca, but uh, you know, all the main colors are. So I think they all came out pretty good. They look a lot better, I will say, uh, once they're, once you've got the flat coat on there. I used the Mr. Color. Uh, actually, the top coat is not Nazca. Obviously, the top coat that I use is the same top coat that I always use is uh, Mr. Color Flat Clear, so that's what I use on that, and that really kind of uh, tones down and desaturates the colors just a slightly bit, just a slight bit. <laughs> so uh, the blue, like the main armor color, which is like pretty much what all the legs are, it's not so much as visible on the upper half as it is the lower half, pretty much all the legs. All that grayish, bluish color was definitely when I first had that sprayed on there, a little bit more blue than kind of what I had hoped. But the top coat uh, desaturated just a little bit, so it's definitely still got a blue hue to it, but it looks a little bit more just kind of straight, to less blue anyway, it looks a little bit more straight gray. And the purple as well, the purple bits, which I was originally hoping would be a little bit more blue, they actually came out a lot more purple than I was expecting, uh, which is okay, I don't mind purple at all, I like it. Uh, that, those were also toned down a bit. They were really bright before uh, when, when they were just, that was just raw paint and then uh, with the glossy top coat on there, of course, that just was making it pop even more. But with the top coat, it's just toned down just a little bit but the colors still pop and it looks really nice. For the visor on the front, I had to paint that. That was like the very last thing that I did um, before the final assembly. It was just painting the visor. The clear part on the chest was clear green already, but the visor in the head was just plain clear, so you can paint that kind of whatever color. I went with uh, fluorescent blue-green for that, so it's just kind of a, a clear teal color there um, for the visor, for the eyes, I think, which does also came out work looking pretty nice. Uh, the decals was the only thing I didn't really particularly show much in the work in progress video. I just showed kind of like a little bit of my selection of how, like, how I was choosing the decals, but didn't really go into like actually applying them. And so someone asked about uh, having a more in-depth video going over how I go about kind of applying custom decals on a kit like this where there's obviously, there's no guide to where the decals go. You have to just kind of freestyle everything. And so uh, yeah, that will probably be something that I'll cover in a future video, how I go about doing that. Cause it's not really that complicated of a process, but it does take a long time. And, and there are some kind of methods that I use when I go about just doing decals like this. So I will do a video, I think sometime in the near future, just talking a little bit more about that, about how I go about applying decals when there's no guide. And it's just my kind of general rules that I like to stick to for, for doing that, which I think gives me results that are aesthetically pleasing to me anyway. So happy with how the decals came out on this, just white and orange. For the most part, uh, like 99% is just white or orange. There's just a couple little gray ones in there, but... One other final step that I had to do was also just the cable connecting the back of the rifle into the tank on the kind of back of the hip section there. That I used the rubber hose that was included with that kit. If you guys remember, I did a review, I did a separate video about the freestyle rifle, freestyle 
gun with it, which I used here for the rifle. Uh, and it did include a rubber hose, but it was uh, it was kind of you couldn't really put it into a specific shape. It was just a just kind of soft rubber hose. So what I did was I fed a one millimeter wire, just aluminum wire, through there so that I could bend it to an exact shape, and that was that was really super helpful. So if you guys get that uh, freestyle gun, I definitely recommend just getting some uh, just one millimeter thin just wire and just stringing that through there and it makes it so much better. You can just form it perfectly to exactly how you need it. And before I forget guys, I should also mention once again that this kit will be for sale. I like all the, pretty much all the stuff that I build. Uh, it's for sale so if you'd like to inquire about purchasing this uh, to own, then just get in touch with me and we can try to sort that out. Thank you so much for your interest if you are interested in purchasing the kit. And then just for the base, I wanted to keep it pretty simple. I uh, had this round black wooden base here just on hand and I thought it fit pretty well with this because I, I wanted to I wanted the focus to be just on the piece itself on the uh, frame arms kit there and I didn't want to focus too much on the base but I did want a base that did kind of uh, just kind of go well. It just gave it something to stand on but that was simple and nice it's just black and so I think that works out pretty well it just barely fits on there I think but again it's it's got a base to kind of ground it but it doesn't need to be something that is like really a part of the piece or like adds something to it it doesn't need to be anything like that so it was just something simple there and I think that works well I think for the kit but I think that pretty much just about wraps it up if you guys have any other questions about this anything that I, you want to know about the build or something that I didn't answer then feel free to just leave your questions down below any comments let me know what you guys think down there I wanted to keep this super clean that was one of my goals as well so I didn't do any pre-shading or weathering or anything like that I just wanted to go for a kind of stylistic super clean look for this and maybe the next one next frame arms build I'll do something uh, utilizing some more um, weathering appreciating stuff like that I think probably for whatever the next build is I've, I've been thinking I want to do another like appreciated build I haven't done one for a while so probably in the next build I'll maybe think about doing something like that uh, this one just wanted to keep it super clean fresh looking and I think it came out pretty good I'm really happy with this for a first time you know, working, uh, completing a frame arms kit, and I think it uh, came out pretty good, in my opinion. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I appreciate your thoughts and feedback, as always, guys. And again, big thank you to S.A. Gundam Store for all their support as well this past month, uh, doing the frame arms reviews and working on this frame arms kit and all of that was all made possible by U.S. Gundam Store. So I'll put a link to their site as always down in the video description. Do go there and check it out. Check out the frame arms stuff that they have if you're interested in taking a stab at frame arms or if you've maybe got some but you're thinking, oh, you want to pick up maybe one or two more, you can always check the link down there and save 10% using the coupon code, of course, that could release 10. So check that out. And uh, that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.